can't believe it's December. What? My mum came to visit me in London recently, and so, like a good mother, she bought me my advent calendar. Um, unfortunately, I'm actually filming this on the 30th of November, so I can't open it. I can't. So this is my November favourites video, and there's some exciting news. First of all, as usual, books. I read three books in November, I'm very pleased with that. I have now reached 30 books out of my 50 book challenge with a month left. Not gonna happen, but I'm still really proud of myself because 30 books is the most I've ever read in a year, ever. So, not a failure. Not a failure. The first book I read was A Dance with Dragons, which is the most recent book in A Song of Ice and Fire, the Game of Thrones series. So I'm up to date now. Season six of Game of Thrones is coming out in April and Winds of Winter is hopefully coming out. I'm now one of those people. I don't know how the people who read Dance with Dragons when it first came out have waited this long. I don't, I don't know how you've done it. It's been like, few weeks for me and I'm shaking and <laughs> freaking out. The second book I read was Essays in Love by Alan de Botton. I don't have the physical copy because I lent it to Lucy. Okay, so, hmm, 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 hmm. I, hmm. So recently I have been obsessed with love and not in a lovey-dovey romantic way, more in a what the F way. What is it? Why is it? Uh, why do we feel this pressure to settle down? Like, why do we do stupid things when we fall in love? And why do we fall in love with an idea of a person rather than an actual person? A friend recommended me Essays in Love, and at first I thought it was a non-fiction book. But no, I started reading it and was like, wait a second, this is fiction. But it's actually kind of a hybrid. So it's a story of a man who falls in love with a woman, and then there's the narrative of their relationship, but you're watching it as an outsider and also he kind of breaks away from it and talks about the philosophy of love as well. I genuinely was underlining quotes in it with a pencil and now I'm really sad that I don't have the book with me I can't tell which quotes are. I found a quote. We base our fall into love upon insufficient material and supplement our ignorance with desire. It was just great and it's making me question everything. And the final book I read this month was In Order to Live by Yomni Park. Yomni Park is a young North Korean woman who escaped North Korea. I am very fortunate in that I got to meet her and she signed my book and she is so sweet and so funny. And this book, oh my God, it's so heartbreaking, but so hopeful and it's really nuanced as well. It definitely puts across that North Korea is horrible and terrible and evil place to live, but it also, Oh, how, I don't know how to explain this. But she but she also kind of like, I don't know how to talk about this. There are things that we take for granted, like being individuals and being able to make our own choices. But for Yomni, she writes about when she first got to South Korea and just feeling so overwhelmed by all of these choices that she had. Um, and almost missing just being told what to do and being told what to think because it was simpler and easier. And the way that she talks about language as well is really fascinating in the way that language can control your identity. In North Korea, there's only one meaning for the word love, which is the love that you express for the leader. There's no words for love that would mean loving your friend, your family, or your partner. Oh my God, the things that she went through. I'm gonna stop talking about this now, read it. Back to the topic of questioning everything about love, I watched Master of None in November. It's a Netflix series written by and starring Aziz Ansari. You may remember him as the author of Modern Romance, this book, this guy. Also stand-up comedian. Okay, hmm, how do, hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, just questioning love. So, okay, um, it's about a guy in his 30s living in New York trying to navigate love, life, career, etc. You get it, it's that storyline, but it's beautifully shot, the style is incredible, the writing is phenomenal, it's really diverse. If you remember me talking about this in a previous favourites video, all about modern romance and love and stuff in the 21st century, he's done a lot of research into this and all of the themes in this book are in the series and it's basically like he's written a fictional narrative but he knows his shit. 
and he gets it because he's done all of this research. I'm a bit obsessed. I can't stop talking about it. I need more of my friends to watch it so I can talk about it. All I'll say is the final two episodes broke me. What? I don't, I have no, I have no way of talking about this without spoiling it for you and I don't want to do that. Um, but the final two episodes just, um, Okay, on to less heavy stuff. I also watched Broad City. I set myself the mission of watching season one and season two of Broad City whilst I was staying in New York. Oh, another favorite, New York. It's about these two girls in their 20s living in New York. There's a whole episode about pegging. If you don't know what pegging is, don't Google it, ask someone. The writing is so good and I love me a female driven comedy. Broad City is absolutely hilarious and I want to write a British version but I don't know the first thing about writing a TV show. The final film in the Hunger Games series, Mockingjay Part 2. To be honest I couldn't remember details of the book. I have read all the books but it was so long ago just there was one huge thing that happened in it that I was like did that happen in the book? Turns out it did but I just had no idea. And Mockingjay was my least favorite book though, so maybe I just wasn't paying attention. And there were some moments in there that they pulled from the book, the real or not real thing. Oh my God. Also in entertainment, I guess this is the category. You can't see what this is, but it's a ticket to Book of Mormon. I went to see Book of Mormon, finally. We were in the second row from the front in the stalls. Damn, I've never seen a musical up that close before. And it is, what? And if you didn't know already, I'm a host on a series on the Astronauts Wanted channel called Hashtag Blessed. I'll put a link in the description for you to go and watch it. It's a super fun show. I love hosting it and would really appreciate if you checked it out. Big announcement time. Big announcement time. Big announcement time. I'm launching a store with DFTBA. Yay! I have made a t-shirt and on it is your favorite quote from Drunk Advice. It's the one that all of you seem to be so obsessed with and are always quoting back at me, so I put it on a shirt. I absolutely love the design. It's done by Harriet, who did the Drunk Advice intro thing. You can click the link in the description or go to dftba.com where you can pre-order this shirt. The shirts won't be out for another week, so make sure you pre-order so you can get them in time for Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, if you want to do a look like a slut poster or a drunk advice tote bag, then you should also order soon. Those items I'm still selling myself and I'm going to be away. So if you want them for Christmas, then you need to order them by the 8th of December. So you have a week and then I can ship them out and you should get them in time. I really hope you like the new shirt design. I feel like this has been a long favorite. For someone who has been questioning love, I sure love a lot of things. Thank you for watching, please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know your favourite things in the comments and don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every week. Alright, bye!